Well, just like anything, you want to set yourself apart from the competition, whether it's in business or whether it's in a multiple offer situation. So what can I do to set myself apart from all of the other offers that are coming in, whether it's two or whether it's 20 in some you know situations that we're writing on? And video is the answer. Video is the answer for everything. <laughs> just about. You ask me a question, my answer is going to be video, and then it's something else to explain to you why video is the answer to it. Welcome to the Cassandra Properties Podcast. We're winging it today, folks. I have our trusty, lovely, can't find the mute button on, Rebecca. How are so you doing, thanks. Bex? I'm good, thank you. We have Petey, uh, and this is this one's for J-Man on the ones and twos over in the corner. Bow, bow, bow. That's right. <laughs> and then we have J-Man, Jeremiah, J-Man Speaks. Joining us on the podcast today. How we doing, bud? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm glad. I'm happy to be here in person. Yes. Right? When I was here last time, I had to come in virtually. It's just not the same. I'm like, I had to picture where you guys were, what you were doing, and all of that. It's... Yeah, right. Well, we... we <laughs> <laughs> so they are adding fuel to the fire, for those of you who can't For those of you who can't see and they're listening, Pete decided to give J-Man a Red Bull, which... It's just probably not what he needed. <laughs> no, big mistake. No. So it's interesting, but you had said when, when I saw you in the conference room, you know, like, oh, it's nice to see, to, to meet you guys in person, but we've done these things virtually now so many times. I, I felt like I had met you already in person. Agreed. Yeah, totally. It was, you know, and it's the branding of video, right? You see, I see you, I see you, I see you. I watch the podcast. I keep watching it. I'm like, wait, I've never met. James in person. That's so strange. But when I saw you, it's like I already have a, a familiarity. I know you guys. I know your personalities. I know the podcast, you know, booth here that you guys are, are always filming in. And, you know, it feels like home. Yeah. I've never been here. It does. <laughs> yeah. So you're the first guest to do a digital end in person. That. That's right. Yeah. Groundbreaking, folks. Of you heard course. it here first. J-Man came in virtually and in person. So pandemic like last time we did this i've got we're going in back the height of the pandemic right the yep. height of the pandemic we're going back April, a ways May 2019 um My so birthday. many impacts you know so many things have changed and real estate is is it almost seems unrecognizable the way that we're doing things today right it's just taken this complete you know right hand turn and and i hear so many people still say things are going to go back to normal and things are going to roll back. I don't think anything's rolling back. This mm -hmm. is the new world, right? It's a whole new world. Absolutely. I, I think a lot of the things that we've implemented, you always got to look at opportunity, right? Through everything that we've been through. And it's like, man, there's so many systems that I'm changing in my business because that's what the clients are used to, right? It, rather than come into the office. We did that for 15 years. I've been in the business 16 years, right? 15 years, you come into the office, we meet, we talk about it. Now it's like, hey, why don't we hop on a Zoom tomorrow morning or is tomorrow afternoon better for you? Yeah. You know, and it's, it's, shoot, if I lived here with the traffic and everything you guys have to deal with, talk about condensing time frames and being more efficient. Uptime, you know, uptime used to have a little log that you would fill out and they would encourage <laughs> the agents to come in yeah. and sit at the desks during uptime. Op we used to call it really? opportunity time in our opportunity time, <laughs> right? So agents don't realize that how wonderful sit it there. is wow. today. You used to have to sit there and the only leads you got were leads that came in while you were at a desk in order. If the phone rang, you got leads. If the yeah. phone didn't ring, you didn't get leads. Wow, that's yeah, yeah wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Becca's got a perplexed <laughs> look on her face like, Jeez. wow. That's pretty different than what we do today. That's for sure. So you're doing some really cool things, and J-Man's joining us today. Uh, we flew him down to talk to the team uh, to share some of the new tools that he's using in business uh, that we thought would be exciting and great to impart to our people as we continue to try and adapt as quickly as you can. Um, but there's some really cool things that I saw uh, from uh, the last speaking engagement you had, I think it was for the awards. We had a few agents that got awards. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about a little bit, so this is as good a forum as Let's any. Let's do it. <laughs> the, the messenger thing, you're presenting offers now through video. Through video, yeah. You know, just like anything, you want to set yourself apart from the competition, whether it's in business or whether it's in a multiple offer situation. So what can I do to set myself apart from 
all of the other offers that are coming in, whether it's two or whether it's 20 in some, you know, situations that we're writing on and video is the answer. Video is the answer for everything. <laughs> Just you, about. you ask me a question, my answer is going to be video. And then it's something else to explain to you why video is the answer to it. But it's, yeah, we'll present the offer. And I teach the, uh, the ABR class, the accredited buyer representative class, where we talk about trying to present your offers in person as much as you can, you know, pre pandemic. And I remember when I taught it here in Staten Island, they're like, that's never going to work here. It'll never work. Never happen. <laughs> yep. And I'm like, you know what? You can drop me out of an airplane right now. Okay. I will parachute in and take over your market with these <laughs> methods that I'm talking about. Right. Like it got to that point. I, I don't know if Petey was in that class. You were in the e-pro class. Um, but it got to that point where like, listen, you guys got to, this is what I'm talking about. But it's, it's the same concept where let me present it in person virtually with a video, tell the story of the buyer. And I'm not saying, you know, Buyer love letters are frowned upon depending on where you are and where you're listening, where you are listening to this. And it's not, you know, the buyer loves the house. They have kids and they grew up in this neighborhood. It's more like, hey, let me tell you a little bit about the buyer. She is gainfully employed. She works at the university. She has little or no chance of getting furloughed or, or laid off yep. or, or, you know, anything like that. She's not just pre-approved. She's actually been to the bank, submitted all of her documents. So she's pre-committed. We just need a house to find and get that appraised. And then as far as I go, I have 18 designations. Let me tell you about me because one important part of, you know, the agent in the transaction is the other side to know that I'll get you through to closing. And you have a great agent that you've hired to be your, 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 you know, your seller's agent. And you want to know there's somebody great on the other side. I'm demonstrating that with the video that I'm putting forth and then everything else that I'm, I'm going over with the offer. So few people... John does that in our shop yes. exceptionally well. John slows everything down and really, really takes his craft very seriously and touches on a lot of the things that we just kind of have a, a way of glazing over because mm -hmm. you've done, you've filled out so many offers and you've done this so many times, but it's really important for the homeowner. Chances are this is the, the one and only or, or one of, two or three times in their life that they're ever right. going to be in this position or have been in this position. So taking the time to slow it down and point mm -hmm. out and highlight these other types of things um, really can be what makes the difference between in these multi offer situations, which are abound now, right? We have multiple offers uh, regularly and, and you get, Unfortunately, you get the complaints, no matter yeah. what the offer was or how it was right. presented or how much diligence went into it. The agents that don't get it feel like yeah. they were slighted, right? Either, Nobody well, likes to lose. it was your deal or it was in your office or, you, well, you're friendly with that broker or no. You know, oftentimes it just boils down to strength of, borrower, of, the, strength of the buyer, strength of the offer and the presentation. Right. So taking the time to kind of slow it down, highlight these things. So now you're pre-recording these and uh, they're uh, how, how does it like the, the whole thing? How does it play out? You, you record this offer presentation and then what? Um, I'm the homeowner. How, who presents that video to me? Do I have an opportunity to ask you questions? Is there any interaction? What's happening so here? It can be done a couple of ways, but typically it is pre-recorded. I use a program called BombBomb, Bomb, but many of the CRMs nowadays, you could just upload a video to YouTube unlisted and then embed that that video in your CRM. And so I would just go over everything like I would in person, three minutes or less, right? Nobody's going to listen to a 20-minute dissertation about why your offer is so great. <laughs> yep. But like three minutes or less, meat and potatoes, here's what it is. You know, sli typically you'd be sliding that over to the seller if you're there in person, but I'm doing it virtually. And I, in the copy of the email, it'll say, you know, this is not a buyer love letter. Could you please forward this to the seller? Um, it has important details terms and conditions in regards to the offer. So on the back end, for those that don't trust, right, <laughs> I can track when it's played, I can track when they click it, I can, I, I can track all of that. And I think once you start doing it, and you establish relationships, the real estate market's only so big, right? And that listing agent will be like, Oh, yeah, Jay, he did this on the last property that you know, he wrote an offer on. He's not doing a love letter. It's not like a trick because everybody's right. like, what, what do you got? What do you got up your sleeve? What's this? What <laughs> this video you're sending me? I'm like, yo, I'm just trying to help my buyer out here. And, but I also copy the buyer in on that email so that the buyer sees, man, every time I write an offer, I'm doing everything I can. I'm doing everything I can to make, make sure you get the home of your dreams. Because like you said, two or three times in your life, we're dealing with somebody's 
dream home. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to make sure that I, I do everything in my power and because they're going to go to work the next day. Oh, Becca, what happened with that house? <sighs> Lost another one. But damn, yep. that agent, he did a video, he did this, he did that. And then they're going to go, my agent's not doing that. So this is um, apropos timing. There is a restaurant that we're working with now. Yep. And the chef said, I want to, I want to be different. I want to do something different. So they're talking about um, serving the, the meals in these um, – they're not crock pots. I forgot Dutch what oven. they're called. Dutch ovens. Yeah. Don't correct me, especially oh, not on air. Oh, hush. <laughs> so they want to serve them in these Dutch ovens. That's cool. And um, they, he wants this to kind of become his thing, right? Uh, there's, uh, you know, like a marketplace menu that's different, of course. But mm -hmm. for the entrees, everything is going to come out in these Dutch ovens. And you can kind of, you know, take – we went to a tasting. And yeah, it was, it was, really it was cool. pretty cool. Like it was, it was, it was cool. different. And, you know, he was trying to distinguish himself like – I know I have great food, and, and, and he has several other restaurants, but there's a lot of us that have great food, right, right. especially mm -hmm. here on the island. So I want to do something that's different. So that's something we don't think about as agents, right? Like, yeah. well, what can we do to distinguish ourselves where when Mr. or Mrs., uh, you know, buyer or seller goes to the office the next day and is talking about their experience, something that stands out, right? So are there other things with, uh, other than the video that you're doing that kind of you feel like, trademark who you are and, and what you're about as you're going through the normal course of business? No, that's it. That's it? <laughs> no. Well, one trick pony. We're done. That's it. What day? Thanks, done. everyone. Have a great Have day. Have a great day. Thanks for coming out. Uh, well, you know, a, a lot of what I do as far as communication is concerned, like keeping your buyer happy, that all starts in the beginning with creating realistic expectations, right? If I sit down with the buyer and they go, you know what? I have FHA financing and I need 6% concessions to buy a home. Well, we're not going to be buying a home right now. My honest opinion is you should probably wait a little bit longer unless you can get money from a relative mm. to gift to you or something like that. Mm -hmm. Because one of our fiduciary duties is honesty, right? Relationships yep. over transactions all day. That's how I live my life. And if you need to wait a little bit longer, I'd rather you wait and be happy than be frustrated because we wrote 25 offers and nobody's taken your FHA, right. <laughs> FHA minimum down payment with concessions. But then also, you know, just educating them on the market realities like hey we might write a dozen offers and to get it accepted it might be 20 percent over asking so if you're looking in the five hundred thousand dollar range you need to be pre-approved up to 600 right because that extra 20 percent that's another 100k on top of you know if you bring somebody out and you you stretch them to the limit with what they're looking at they're never going to be successful yeah mm -hmm. i feel like there's a a real lack of that kind of candid honest discussion yeah not that implying that agents are being dishonest. I think that it's it's uncomfortable sometimes to have those Very just cold, so. hard discussions with your your sellers with their expectations in different markets, right? When people think that, you know, the home is worth a million too because they put, you know, I, I literally had a seller once who put granite, like imagine sheetrock, but being replaced with granite. There was granite everywhere. <laughs> not the ceilings, but all of the walls had this, he had this special, wow. like it was only maybe a quarter of an inch thick, but everything was granite. So, and it was a townhouse. So as we're going through, it's like, oh, but I've, I've got $80,000 yeah. in granite on this. <laughs> yeah, that's. My cell phone never works. So I don't know. Why. Right, <laughs> can, that's great. But nobody in this wow. market is looking for granite walls, right? So those are hard <laughs> conversations to have with people sometimes, but. Yeah. It's so important to manage expectations off Jump Street, and not enough of us do it. Yeah, yeah. And then even with the sellers, it's like, hey, anybody that tells you it's not a guessing game and pricing property is wrong. It's an educated guess. I can look at what's sold. I can look at what's, what's active and what's pending and go, you know what? Here's where I feel my finger is on the pulse of what this might sell for, but the market will tell us. Yep. Right? And if we get multiple offers, hey, that's a blessing but if we sell, right, that's your goal. Right. Like, like mm -hmm. some, you don't want your seller to be disappointed. Oh, we only got one offer? Right. <laughs> A full asking? I didn't get over asking. Are you kidding me? It's like, remember when we were happy when properties just sold in a balanced market or a buyer's market? We'd be begging people to come to, to our properties. But it's like, now, oh, two off 
what did we do wrong? We only got two offers on this property and went, you know, 10% over asking. Yeah. Like, well, could also you get the, 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 the sellers that are upset. Why did we price it this way? We got six offers. We should have had a higher yeah. price. Like, no. That's no, a sweet we, spot. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, market, market's going to dictate, like you said, always. What's happening in your home market now? Is it, is it crazy like here? It is. And what's crazy is that we're not used to that. Historically, our, our market, had, we're called the steady eddy. When economists talk about our market, the steady eddy of Rochester, New York, you know, we, we appreciate it like 5 to 8% per year. Our, our median sale price was $154,736, okay? Wow. Roughly. That's exact. Um, <laughs> well, I, you got to know your statistics. And in the last five years, we've appreciated 54.7%. Wow. 54.7%. So, like, when I have a conversation wow. about real estate, mm -hmm. exactly. You know, somebody owns property in the city, and, you know, we're having issues with, with the moratorium on evictions and, and, and that yeah. kind of stuff. Hey, investor, you have a portfolio of properties, 5, 10, 20, that you thought was worth $2 million, $3 million? Guess what? It's probably worth 50% more than you're thinking. So now's a good time to cash out with these rental laws. You know, rental laws are changing, and if you got any unhappy unhappy uh, tenants that aren't paying or whatever the case may be and they're not applying for for what's out there cash out now roll it into some vacation rentals or something else maybe in the caribbean uh, mm -hmm. somewhere so staten island we're part of new york city so you would think well it's part of new york and it's going to follow mm -hmm. the new york cycle it doesn't so staten island always had the same kind of you know, we've been saying this for a long time. If yeah. you're looking to hit a grand slam, you know, close your eyes and swing. Don't buy here. If you're looking to consistently hit doubles, singles, doubles, and triples, Staten Island is the place to be. Through the the you know 9/11, the 08 crash, Superstorm Sandy, and now the pandemic, we never had these crazy periods of appreciation, but we also never had the crazy drops until now. Yeah. Now things are. It is nice for Staten Island for once to kind of feel like we've stepped forward as, see, we've been telling you all this whole time, <laughs> baby, we made it. This was the Let's place go. to be. Yeah. And the market is just completely bananas, right? So we have inventory issues. I'm sure you have inventory issues. Yeah. What are some things you can do to solve for that, right? Like how do you shake the tree and you're not allowed to cold call, call, right? A lot of the traditional methods are, are on pause now. How, do you, how are you shaking the tree and generating listings? A wing and a prayer. A wing and a prayer. <laughs> yeah, no. That's it. <laughs> you know, it's, it all comes down to predictive analytics and data. I think that's that's the future of everything. You know, I came into the industry prospecting. I'm I'm a cold calling machine. I love knocking on doors, mainly because the people are home and other people are scared to do it, right? Mm, and point. so when you look at predictive analytics, it'll say, well, I, I used to knock every door, every door. Now I can say, well, in this neighborhood, these 20 people out of the 100 doors I would have knocked – are more likely to sell based on certain data points, right? Maybe they had kids, they just had a kid, or they're getting divorced, or kids going off to college, or they have a change in, in, in employment. Whatever yep. the case may be, there's they track the data, right? Who has a high sell score? Now I know, you know, go, go knock on that door. And if you look at what's illegal as far as cold calling is concerned, there's a little bit of a gray area there when it comes to door knocking. Um, it, it said nothing I'm going to say on record, but if you look at the NYSAR website with yep. what, with, with what the, uh, it, it does say that door knocking while not illegal should be done carefully. Yep. And so that, that's what I would say. And it's like, man, again, do the things that other people won't do. Right. Agents, I go to office after office. They're sitting there going refresh on their phone, man, no listings coming in yet. Refresh on their phone again. Nothing yet. I'm like, yeah. what are you waiting for? You want your ship to come in? Go build it yourself, right? Take a lesson from Noah. Yeah. So. <laughs> this Red Bull's kicking in. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> the, the predictive analytics thing is, is interesting. It's something we've toyed with for, for years, yeah. right? And are you finding that you're pulling together the data points and you're kind of zeroing in or are you using third party software? Oh, no, no, third party. Uh, that's way beyond the scope of my expertise. I didn't pay attention enough in school to put that stuff together. And you 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 found <laughs> I'm smart enough to hire an expert. You found some some experts that yeah. are are good. Yep. 
So some some of the issues we have is uh, as you go through these different, you know, there's always someone who has the the latest and greatest secret formula. Oh, right, shiny penny. Here it you is. Know, the shortcut. Like we we figured it out. We we've got the seller leads down, um, and it it's just a little bit of a drain as you jump from software to software, program to program, you have to educate the agents on how leads are going to come in and what do these leads mean and what are the lead score? How does that translate here? And Mm -hmm. how should you approach these types of leads? And then these types, and then you get two, three months in and 90% of the leads were awful. They feel a little bit deflated. Yep. Now you've got to kind of pick up, Hey, we got the next one. Yeah. Yeah, Well, I think sometimes it's, it's like, you got to look back and say, were the leads awful? Or were the conversion methods? Yep. Right? Because, Fair point. you know, they're like, oh, I'm not, when you don't pay for something, there is an appreciation. Yep. Right? When I was paying $1,000 a month for leads, boy, I am going after every single lead that comes in because I'm like, that's my money. Yep. I got to make sure that I convert that. But if it's given to me for free, then it's like, oh, I call them. I hope they don't answer because I don't want to hear no. Right? Because fear of failure, fear of rejection is what stops me. And then that's it. One call. Or, or maybe they use something like slide out and they go right to voicemail and then they leave a message. <laughs> they didn't get a call back. I don't know what happened. Those leads were, weren't that great. So how do you, yeah. how do you deal with that? You know, how do you keep the agents motivated? How do you get them to feel empowered? How do you continue to, you know, get them feeling good about banging the drum and, and dealing with the rejection and dealing with, you know, the I constant. It, it all comes to, down to training. You know, it's, it's like, Iron sharpens iron. You, you have to practice your craft here in the office so that they came to a point where I'd, I'd get to a door and I'd be like, anything you say, I, anything you say, anything you say, I will overcome. I, I promise you. So just let me in the door. Yeah, with for sale by owners, I used to grab the red and white sign, man. I'd grab it out of the yard and knock on the door. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, I'm here. You want to sell your house, right? Well, yeah, that's why I'm here today. Did right? you really do Yes. I They'd be like, see it too. This guy, like, first of all, they're so shocked. Like, what are you doing? Like, you want to sell your house. This is what I do. How much do you want to get? Uh, all right. If I could show you a way that my fee for service would be built right in, can we work together? Yes. All right. Start wiping my feet. Let me come in. Because that, when you're that confident, you know, that like nothing can stop you. It, like, I want you to say no. Because it, if you're really a jerk and you slam the door in my face, fantastic. I'm just going to go on to the next person. They're not saying no to me personally. Right. Right. I'm not saying that rejection. Why would they say no to me? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm their, their, their blessing in real estate today. That's how I look at it. Like, they're not saying no to me. It's, just, awesome. it's, it's not the right time. <laughs> they just keep it moving. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what what other technologies are we're starting to play around with the the facebook pixels yep and setting up groups on the website and pulling out the individual pages there's some really neat stuff mm-hmm. that like i don't even want to talk about yeah, it's very that we're doing that like is super targeted and super neat yeah i mean when, when you talk about pixels and and then you can create talk about it too much either if you guys are doing it but you create custom conversions and say look if somebody landed on this page but didn't move forward to that page i want a different thing i want them to see something different than yeah. the person that went forward to the next one so I, th- I think you know when people ask me like oh i'm getting an ad at the grocery store on the cart i'm like yo save your money yeah put that into digital advertising right uh, or, or or the bus stops like I'm not standing at the bus in the rain going, oh, man, I was thinking about selling my house. And I'm going to call, you know, it's that digital average. Those impressions are the same. You'll have the same result when you see somebody. I'm going to go, James, like, I know you from somewhere, right? And you're gonna be like, yeah, because I follow you around because of my Facebook pixel yep. all day until you call me to buy or sell your home. Yep. Everything has changed. Totally. Yeah. Everything has changed. We literally had someone recently talk about wanting to – get the, the shopping cart yes. at the local yes, shop, right, and, and advertise on it. It's like, like uh, mm. really? <laughs> That's what you want to do now? Uh, Back to shopping carts? So, somebody sent me, it was, it, was, it was a signage in the bathroom, and this guy said, this is no joke. I have it on my Instagram somewhere. I'd have to find it. You're in for a real estate bargain if you called this guy. 
for real. You're in. You're in. Okay? In the bathroom. <laughs> Play on words, but that's not one that I, I don't want to be associated with the urinal, bro. Like, what are you doing? Like, what? The, what? But here you are talking about it. Exactly. Yeah, but I'm not calling them. I have it. I have it. I think I had posted it that day and it was like, oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Like, please call me if, you, if you're thinking about doing this in the in the future because it's not. Your money can be much better spent. You know, so where are we heading? on your people. Where are we going? Is this the rates are going to stay low or is this going to continue or? I think even if, you know, if the rates, the rates will increase moderately, but it's. I don't think it's enough to affect affordability. I think it's it's the market that's affecting the affordability, you know, driving the prices up so far. I know I've seen it, and as I talk to other agents around the country, where some buyers now are, there's just so frustrated. You're going to see the market correct itself, but in a way that we don't want to, where buyers are just going to say, I'm going to take a break. You know, I, I really, how many times can I get my heart broken? Yep. And, and, like, I motivate people for a living. It's hard to motivate somebody after 20 offers. Yeah. Right. Like, don't worry. The journeys is just important as the destination. We got you. You know, one day we're going to be sitting around the table talking about how we wrote 20 something offers before you got this one. You know, and then you took you, you busted all the cliches like everything happens for a reason. <laughs> right. <laughs> Things are meant to be. You know? <laughs> but it's like it's oh, down man. to 22. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, oh, it's hard. boy. It's hard out there. It is. It is tough. And what what starts to happen is, is the buyer starts to then measure each one they didn't get against the next one. Mm-hmm. And, well, this one had this and this one had this. And then when you're 5, 10 deep, it, it gets tough. Well, and, right? and, and they're so jaded. Like one that I that told me they wanted to take a break for a little while. You know, and it's like that girlfriend that says, I want to take a break. Are we really taking a break or are you breaking up with me? Like, what's the story here? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I had this listing coming on the market. I'm like, this is great for you guys. Moving, could, right in your price range. What's wrong with it? You know, like they're, yep. they were already there. Yeah. Like, let me know when it hits the market and if you don't get an offer. Like they're at that point already. And then That's I had another tough. one that sat for a little while and they're like, Something must be wrong with it if there's, you know, you don't have 23 offers on it. I'm like, ah, maybe it's just priced a little bit high. Sometimes it is the seller's price. Yep. So are you able to bring them back around? Not yet. Right. <laughs> I will, though. Not yet. Okay. I will. So I, um, I started talking about this like three years ago, but now, like, here we are three years later. Uh, we've created a whole generation of buyers, by the way, that don't know what real interest rates are. <laughs> right? right like that's that's a problem yep as things start to correct yep. inflation is coming right this is going to happen you know and when i was a kid you know what interest rates were the first deal i think with 13 13 and percent and it was a good rate right right Wild. yeah and this is supposed to be a cycle mm-hmm. rates go up rates go down prices go up rates go down that hasn't happened in a long time well don't say back in my day whatever you do yeah, well, that was, you know, back when I was a kid. Back in my day, we bartered for real estate. I'll tell you what. <laughs> well, it, there's a guy in my office who sold 100 properties in a year, and it was back in the 80s, okay? He still has a license plate that says sold 100. Um, <laughs> but whatever. The point The point is he sold he sold that those 100 properties when it went from 18 to, to that 13 and a half. People were coming out of the woodwork like interest rates are so low, thirteen right. and a half. You know, and it's like the buyers, right? And just like you said, it they don't know how how great they really have it, and then they really need to spike up to get that fear of loss to kick in and get them to go, whoa, hold on. I guess we, you know, that in combination with the appreciation of of the values of properties, we got to take action, or else we're not going to live anywhere near the city. Yep. Well, right? look, as the rates creep up. The, the prices should level off and start to come down, but it's going to be a difficult period in in the transition where it's been so damn long. People who bought homes and are now reselling, you know, that seven-year cycle, rates are still obscenely low. And when they get back to normal, which right. you would think they kind of have to, right? Yep. Now what? When people are seeing 6 7 8%. Right, and then you got people that don't want to sell because their interest rates are so low, and if they, you know how are they going to move up? Not going to move up in a house, you know, 
more of a lateral move unless it's a school district or something like that. So the, the, the bottom line is you got to act now. Got to go. The bottom line is you got to list the last, baby. We got to go. We got go. all this buyer talk. If you got, if you got sellers, <laughs> you could take care of business. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what we need more of. And it's, uh, as, and that's what I saw as I was getting more frustrated and writing offers and writing offers and writing offers. Man, if you're representing just buyers right now, you're, re- you are working harder than you've ever worked in your entire career. I promise you. I've never written so many offers for buyers. And I was like, you know what? You know who's not having a tough time? Sellers agents. Yep. <laughs> why don't I go join that team? <laughs> yep. Right. <laughs> and that's why we have you here today. Yeah. Right. You know, you know we wanted to have you come down and, and impart some of that wisdom to the team on, you know, different methods to unlock more listings because inventory is down. I think, what was it, month over month, it was down 38% or something. It was yeah. crazy numbers. Closed homes are up 70% or 69% and inventory is down yeah. 37 Like, we need more listings. So, with that. Yeah, exactly. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Paul J-Man up. speaks today. <laughs> Yeah, well, we're pushing up on 1 o'clock. We wanted to squeeze in a a podcast here. So I was again looking for my phone. We're (laughs) going (laughs) to... Twice. Twice. (laughs) How could you put the giant eye? Hey, there you are. I'm over here. Oh, Uh, man. So we're going to wrap up, folks. We wanted to squeeze one in quick, and uh, we're going to go have our seminar with J-Man. And as always, it's a pleasure, my friend. Yeah, thanks for having me. Always. How do people get a hold of you? The interwebs. The interwebs? Just yes. type in. Yeah, solo.to slash jmanspeaks. That's my link tree. You can get me everywhere. Got but it. It's jmanspeaks typically on any of the major social media platforms. Beautiful. Awesome. Good to see you, my friend. And yes. we're going to go get schmott. The schmott, I say. Let's do it. <laughs> Thanks, oh, everyone. Stay safe. <laughs>